Welcome, everybody, to the first ever virtual fundraiser for the Bamberger Ranch Preserve, the Sela Spectacular Picnic. So while we're waiting for people to tune in, let me introduce myself. My name is Jared. I will be your MC slash host for the day. You'll be seeing a lot of me, and we'll be coming in and out of live segments all day. So we're going to have a lot of um, produced videos. We're going to have a, a lot of fun. And again, it's all going to end at 5.30 with a live Q&A with Mr. Bamberger and all the Bamberger Ranch staff. So before we get going, let me tell you a little bit about the ranch. We are a 5,500 acre nonprofit. We are an outdoor classroom for underprivileged youth and underserved youth. So today you're gonna to see a little bit that we do with our educational program. You're gonna see the cast of characters. You're gonna see all the special things that make the Bamberger Ranch worth supporting, okay? So we're just gonna have a lot of fun. And we don't know how the day is gonna go because it's live. We've already had a couple technical glitches, but it's okay, okay? Because we're all in this together. So without further ado, let me tell you this. When I open these gates, the fun is going to start, and the madness is going to start, and the cast of characters are going to reveal themselves throughout the day. So are you ready to have some fun? I'm ready to have some fun. Here we go. All right, everybody. So we are a private ranch or a private operating foundation. And the reason is because we don't have as many days as we wish with a limited staff of only five people, reservation only. So today I have all of your reservations. We're gonna start right here at our rock. Now, one of the main reasons we're doing this is because the COVID pandemic has caused us to cancel so many of our educational programs. And it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the man who has led us through the COVID crisis, our board chairman, Mr. Rusty Yates. Thank you, Jared. I want to welcome you all to this first ever Sela Spectacular Picnicathon. And on behalf of the board of directors, our staff, and our volunteers, I want to thank you for tuning in. Of course, we would prefer that you visit us in person, but due to the unfortunate circumstances caused by the global health crisis, we have chosen to present to you this virtual tour. We sincerely hope that you have a good time today. But before we kick this thing into a higher gear, I want to express my sincere gratitude for our incredibly talented staff, without whom none of this would have been possible. They have worked tirelessly to bring this event to life, and it has been an honor and a privilege for me to work with these dedicated professionals. Today, it is my wish that you will get a glimpse into what makes Sula such a special place and what makes Bamberger Ranch Preserve a meaningful institution. You see, not only does our land stewardship and our open space preservation benefit our neighbors, our region, and our state, but our educational program and our scientific research have had a positive impact on thousands of children and adults from all walks of life. Yes, we have a very compelling story to tell, one which resonates with people all over the world. 
my friend and conservation hero, Andy Sanders, often refers to Sheila as a beacon of hope. And that is a sentiment that I, along with many others, share. So please, won't you help us in keeping this light shining? I know with the help of you and sponsors like you everywhere, the future of Bamberger Ranch Preserve is very bright. It is now my immense pleasure introduce our new executive director, April. <laughs> April recently took over the reins from our beloved Colleen Gardner. And as many of you know, Colleen is absolutely instrumental in building Bamberger Ranch into a very successful nonprofit industry. He was the queen bee around here for more than 20 years. We will be for her service, and she will always be a part of the sea life. I also know that Colleen is thrilled to pass the torch to April. Dr. Sam comes to us with vast experience in the conservation profit world. Her career and education qualified. But just as important, she understands our culture and deeply appreciates J. David Bamberger's vision. But this transition is not only about respecting the past, it is about boldly leading. I am convinced that April is the perfect choice to build upon our many past accomplishments, helping for many. I hope you find today both enlightening and entertaining, or as Christina and Jared like to say, edutaining. So, without further ado, it's time for me to pass the baton to the one and the only April Sansom. Thank you very much, Rusty, for that wonderful introduction. Thank you so much. And Rusty, also, thank you very much for your hard work and your dedication to the Sela Bamberger Ranch Preserve. The staff, the board, myself, we are all very lucky to have you as chairman of the board. And your contribution to this organization is extraordinary. So thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. I am very, very happy to have begun my new position as executive director of Sela Bamberger Ranch Preserve. As Rusty mentioned, I've had the privilege and honor of knowing J. David Bamberger since my early days in high school in San Francisco. And right now, I'm not going to talk about how long ago that was. He's been a conservation mentor and a conservation hero of mine since those days. Since those days, I've seen Sela flourish under kind, strong, and competent leadership. Since then, I've also had the opportunity to live and work overseas on various community-based conservation initiatives. I've had the opportunity to live and work in Wisconsin, the birthplace of Aldo Leopold's land ethic. And now, I am so thrilled to return my home in Central Texas, where my heart lies. I'm very excited to join an exceptionally talented team of land stewardship outreach and environmental education professionals whose work is inspiring at 
any time and all the time, but particularly in these days of the global health crisis. Many, many nonprofit organizations across the state and the nation and the globe have faced difficult decisions just like us in terms of this crisis. We have had to cancel all of our programming. We've had to cancel our major fundraising events. Those were difficult decisions that we needed to make. We have several generous anonymous donors who have uh, told us that they're willing to match contributions. And we know that you'll enjoy the day's events and information and activity about what we do here at CELA. The staff, true to form, have responded to this crisis with remarkable resilience, creativity, and flexibility. They've worked so hard. You know, I've known for a long time that there's nothing that the CELA staff can't do. And I've suspected for a long time that they're all part superhero. And that really, they've really proven that to me because apart from their regular jobs, they've become movie producers and social media experts during this crisis. We really know that you're gonna enjoy the day and we really hope that you do. Whether you can join us for five minutes or five hours, we'd like to thank you for being here today and thank you for your support of CELA Bamberger Ranch. Whether you've spent multiple summers in a row at CELA or whether you are more like the gentleman that I just spoke with on the phone the other day who explained to me that he is so looking forward to coming out to a tour of the preserve as soon as it is, at it, as soon as it is safe for us to open our doors, then he is going to come out and do that. Now, I want to show you our behind the scenes here. Because, uh, this day would not be possible without our wonderful intern, Simone, and it would not be possible without the support of all of our spouses and uh, volunteers that we have here on the farm. With a staff of only five, there's only so much that we can do individually. So we really do require all of you to help us with our mission. So if you cannot donate, we encourage you to email us info at bambergerranch.com to see how you can volunteer with us. Now, a part of our very first fun segment, folks, this is live. We don't know how this is going to go. Even son Aiden, one of our campers and a beekeeper's apprentice, get into a hive live. Who knows what's going to happen? That's the international sign for Aiden to come here. All of my campers should know that. It should be something part of their nightmare. Let me flip the camera before I hand it off. Aiden, anything that you want to say to our wonderful crowd? Wow, you see that folks? Just like a teenager. Let me get this plugged in, then I'll hand it off. Ah. Don't you just love live television events on Facebook? Sorry, folks. We, uh, we're working on this. We're working really hard um, to, to get all the problems figured out. You know, when we did this yesterday, it was seamless. It all worked. We should have just done it live yesterday. 
Okay, so as we give it a little bit more time for, for people to tune in and we let our polar bear, Stephen, get even hotter, climate variability is real if you ask him. All right, I'm gonna let this go a little bit longer. Plug that in. Go ahead and give me a mic check. Mic check, mic check. Let's look at some bees. Alright. Alright, we got eight people tuned back in. Read me. Okay. okay. There you go. Let's try this again, folks. Good morning, Steve Fulton here, manager of the Bamberger Ranch. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to walk over here and, and uh, like to show you a little bit of a little bit of the beekeeping that we do here on the ranch. So the beekeeping started here on the ranch uh, around 1980. Um, don't know the exact year uh, since that was the year I was born. Uh, <laughs> kind of hard to remember that that far back um, what, what you what you're gonna see here follow along what you're gonna see here is the, is the Langstroth hive um, it's the most one of the most common beehives that you'll see with beekeepers taken care of um, the, the biggest benefit of, of a Langstroth hive like this is it can get as big as you as the as the bees can handle so the, the stronger the number of bees uh, the larger the number of the bees, the bigger the hive can get, which in turn translates to a lot of honey. I'm going to go ahead and take this, this inner cover, this, this lid off to show you the inner cover. And these are the parts of a, parts of a Langstroth hive. Set that right there. Go ahead and take the inner cover off. Now this first super, which is the box, has 10 frames inside it. If you notice, this box is a little a little uh, shorter than the bottom two boxes. This is a honey super, so it is, it's what we call a medium honey super. And you also have a shallow honey super that's, a, that's about that wide, so a little bit narrower and, and, and lighter steel. The thing with honey is it gets heavy. So the more frames of honey you have in a super, the heavier it's going to be. They haven't really filled this top super up with honey yet. It's about half full, so it's got a little weight to it. Now, this first big box or, or deep super is going to be our one of our brood supers. Now, as I found out the last time I was in this hive, they actually don't have any brood. Uh, or very little brood in this super in these frames. So I'll go ahead and pull you out, pull out one of these frames to show you what they have packed it full of. That, ladies and gentlemen, is yummy, yummy bee barf. That's honey, that's all capped honey. Both sides of that frame, that frame weighs probably about 15 pounds. It's got some weight to it. I'm gonna go ahead and ease that back in there. We're gonna go ahead and take off this whole super so we can get down where I can show you some brood. Brood, of course, being the being the, the larval form, larval stages or egg stages. Whoa, that's heavy. So this one is mostly full of honey. So yeah, it weighs about 120 pounds. Set that right there. Whew. Now what you're starting to see. Or what you will see, we'll give them a little bit more smoke. The further you go into a hive, the more agitated the bees will get. Um, this variety of bees is is a nicer variety. Um, let me go ahead and pull this out so I can show you some brood. We might even see the queen. Okay, so here in this, this corner here, in this corner over here, there's a little bit of capped honey. 
but this other cap, these other cap cells, this is all brood. And you mm -hmm. actually see the little larva inside the ones that haven't been capped off yet. All right. So it's a pretty good brood pattern, but you also see a lot of pollen. So all the all the cells that are filled with that yellow substance, that's pollen. A lot of pollen in here as well. I'm looking for the queen. These are drone cells. See, they, they, they stick out a little, even a little, little further than the brood cells. It's not uncommon to find brood, uh, uh, drone brood in your beehive. Even though the drones, well, this is a drone bee right here, the drones do very little for the beehive. They're, they're basically a deadbeat, deadbeat dads. Uh, they uh, sit around and eat a bunch, and maybe they have a maybe they'll have a small opportunity to breed with a with a queen from another hive. I'm gonna set this back in. Pull out one more frame to see if we can see a a little more brood. This hive was split. So back in the back in the spring. In the early spring, I only had four hives here on the ranch. And I wanted to have a few more bees than that. So I took those four strands of hives and I split them up. I divided them and made nine more additional hives from the, from the, from the four hot hives I had. When you do that, you end up with a small hive. Your split is a small hive. So about five frames. Two or three frames of brood like this. And that's an excellent brood pattern, by the way. And then you'll have a, a frame of nectar or honey. And a frame that hopefully has a bunch of pollen. So they have enough food. Well, as you as you remove that those five frames and a bunch of bees with it. A um, couple days after after separating those, uh, you add a queen. You buy a queen. I buy a mated queen. There's multiple ways you can do this. I buy a mated queen. That way I know for sure that they're going to start laying eggs right away. You introduce them to the hive. There's a, there's a process to introduce a queen, a new queen to a hive. And hopefully across the next several weeks, the workers will accept that queen. And then you'll have a full-fledged hive. Now, again, it'll be a small hive. Initially, but it will grow if that queen is doing everything she's supposed to do. The, the hive will grow. This one is a very happy queen, a very successful split. Um, from last week of March to now, we went from a single box with only five frames of comb and bees to three boxes of comb honey, nectar, pollen, and a lot of brood. It's been a pretty good, pretty good spring for beekeeping. And these girls are working hard for me. We have had the fortune to harvesting some honey this spring. Not a bunch, but a little bit, enough to Enough to develop that taste. We really like the honey. Next spring, if we have another good spring next spring, we might have loads of honey. But it all depends on the weather. All right, there you have it. We got into a beehive, showed you some, some, some uh, brood, showed you some honey, showed you some pollen, showed you some bees, still got some angry ones buzzing around me. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, stay tuned in. We have a lot of other fun stuff to show you.
right. Thank you, Aiden, for being our camera person. Thank you, Big Steve, for teaching us something a little about your girls. Now, as we walk down Award Alley, I want to tell you what's coming up next in our, our 1030 Produce Block segment. We're going to start with Dear G. Childs and Morning Meditation to really get you into that pause and reflect groove. We're going to have Mr. Bamberger's Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation Hall of Fame segment featuring Jane Goodall and other familiar faces. And we're going to have an interview with the person who this whole day would not be possible with. An interview with our videographer, photographer extraordinaire, Zach Chambers. So stick around for a few minutes. We'll have all the technical difficulties figured out by the time Steven loses to Callan Seal in skeet shooting at 1130. So we hope to see you all then.